be to have a corresponding amount of deadly radiation. Since you're alive, your, your results, your measurements must be wrong. In other words, they did not even admit the possibility that doctors Fleischmann and Pons might have discovered or stumbled across an entirely new way of doing nuclear reactions. They shot it down right they away. They shot it down on almost on day one, sharpened the knives, and uh, did a media campaign against it, and succeeded in branding it as pathological science, fraud, scientific schlock. All these kind of words were used. But the bottom line is this. The proof now for the reality of a class of low-energy nuclear reactions is completely overwhelming. There are some 3,000 papers published. They're not all uh, as high quality as a smaller subset of those papers. But of those papers that are really good, and there are hundreds that are, the evidence is stupendous. It would uh, Any reasonable scientist taking an objective look at this monumental gathering of information, which we can discuss a little more, uh, would say, yes, there's a whole class of low-energy nuclear reactions that absolutely must be investigated, and we should certainly either put on low burner or terminate, probably terminate, the infamous hot, hot fusion program and who, save some money. Who is beating us at this game outside of this country? Other uh, other nations? I'll tell you the nation that is the, the two, two nations that are most likely to succeed in this, okay? Uh, Japan and China. Okay. Actually, I bet more heavily on China at this point. Which is unfortunate, but... Uh... Well, uh, yes, uh, uh, it is unfortunate that the United States, where this was first discovered, is going to be taken to the cleaners, so to speak, by another country that has much more open, open-minded scientists. For example, uh, the ninth international conference on cold fusion was held in Beijing, and I went to it in May of 2002. And it was a completely open-minded meeting at Tsinghua University in Beijing. Uh, scientists from around the world came, uh, from uh, Italy, uh, Russia, France, uh, Israel. Now, Israel, by the way, is a player in, in this. A very good, uh, strong, private uh, company within Israel is, is doing this work. I'm very happy to say that. And uh, uh, But China had its physics societies formally sponsoring this meeting. And there's no blood in the streets uh, in China uh, as far as the uh, issue of cold fusion. They don't kill each other over it. Whereas in the United States, I mean, figuratively speaking, kill each sure. other. Sure. Well, you never know in China. Yeah, right. Well, uh, it's true with Tiananmen Square and what have you. But the point is, uh, there's an open-mindedness to new technological and scientific ideas. And the Chinese people obviously are very smart. They produce very high-quality products. And when they see an opportunity here, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that at, when this technology reaches a critical stage, and it may w well do that in the, in the coming years, it's still having trouble of making uh, very reliable, robust systems, but it is absolutely real nonetheless. When they find the way to make it robust and real, they'll take off like a, like a rocket with this. Now, what are the applications for cold fusion in, in, practically for all of us if, if this thing is <laughs> up? Essentially anything. Any area of energy technology that can be imagined could, in theory, be, be, re, re, be replaced by cold fusion. You could heat your houses. You could run your, your cars. Houses, electricity. Uh, rocket propulsion, many things. Here's the bottom line. In a, a gallon of water, this is an approximation because my viewpoint on this is that the cold fusion theorists, even the main mainline cold fusion theorists, don't really understand the process very well at all. In fact, I think they're going, in, generally speaking, in the wrong direction. They're doing good work on experiments, but the theoretical foundations that they're doing are, have some serious problems and it is causing uh, the field to be retarded. But one gallon of water uh, has in it uh, one sixty-seven hundredth of that water has molecules that contain the heavy hydrogen isotope due, called deuterium. Okay. Hydrogen is one extra neutron in its nucleus. All right. And when you fuse two deuterium nuclei together to make helium, I'm not saying that's how it happens at the surface of palladium, but or in palladium. But when that happens, 
you do get a, a certain amount of energy release that in the case of, of this type of reaction doesn't produce deadly gamma rays but produces instead heat all right the amount of heat in one gallon of water i'm talking ordinary water now sure. in the ocean i want to be real clear to your listeners just scoop Not it right water, up okay. just the ordinary water from the ocean the lake the brook the snow anywhere from your local uh, from your tap store. okay okay 300 gallons of gasoline equivalent my oh my and it's keep that it's... in my, that number any if any, any listener today uh, your program uh, remembers anything of what I'm saying, please remember that one number that in the United States a discovery that was made in 19 that was announced in 1989, uh, written uh, out of town with ridicule, so to speak, by the U.S. Department of Energy and its idiotic academic. Uh, uh, Slaves, as it were. Well, two gallons of water might last you an entire year if you drive eighteen thousand miles, for example. Oh, of course. If you're getting thirty miles to yeah. a gallon, no. right? Oh, energy would God. be free. Energy would be free for all practical purposes. Ah, but that's why it's not out there, Eugene. Well, of course, they will have to tax it. And now, even if we had cold fusion devices tomorrow, I assure you that the government would find some way of taxing it because they would have to find some way of continuing. The support, of course, to keep up the interstate highway system. I would still pay the same money I'm paying for gasoline, which I think is outrageous. Uh -huh. I would still pay that for this kind of fuel. Of course, because it would be clean. Yep. There would be no uh, emissions of, uh, of of either uh, particles of soot or uh, nitrogen uh, oxide. And or... you wouldn't be dependent on anyone. That's correct. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Uh, Iraq, Iraq, any of them. They could uh, kiss our sweet, you know what? Uh, <laughs> we could, you know, we could say goodbye, folks. In fact, the thing that outrages me the most about this is that we could have, many years ago, even when the, the days when Saddam was in power, okay, um, and a horrible dictator and a, and a complete um, megalomaniac he was, and I'm glad he's gone, okay. But the, but the point of the matter is. Is we could have the United States government could have begun to quietly tell Saudi Arabia, Iraq, all these countries that are have us by the uh, soft spots. Uh, in a few more years, not too many more, we will have this problem solved, and we're not going to be dependent on you at all. And that goes for you too, uh, companies in the United mm -hmm. States that that think that we're going to be eternally. Uh, beholden to oil interests, we're not. We we will eat oil uh, for food. We use it for food. plastics, right? Make it for plastics, but we're not going to use it for combustion, which is an absurd use, particularly in an age when we have discovers discoveries like coal fusion, and I haven't even discussed vacuum energy yet. Or uh, that's when that's when we yeah, come we're back. Talk about those too, but but. Here, the thing about coal fusion that's wonderful, uh, low energy nuclear reactions, LENR, and apart from our website, infinite-energy.com, which will refer people to all websites uh, with new types of energy, the primary website that deals with uh, LENR is called LENR-CANR.org. Uh, uh, and if you go to that website, you'll have numerous PDF file, technical reports, original reports, just like on our website, but they have a primary focus on, on coal fusion, LENR. The technical papers that scientists and engineers can eat up and show, see for themselves the reality of this emerging field. And that's the paradigm. One case, okay, of new energy, radically new energy, as we call it, uh, unconventional energy, not standard alternative energy. That's the one case that is overwhelmingly documented across a huge variety of publications, countries, and what have you. And it's a disgrace, an absolute disgrace, that in our country, the U.S. Department of Energy will not review, relook at uh, the original disaster that they perpetrated with their negative report.